Welcome to Chicago Reacts. I'm Sonia. This is Kit. And today we will be reacting to World War I, 1916 by Epic History. Look, everyone, support Epic History. They're doing a lot of great content. It's very informative, and we need that stuff now more than ever. And be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Chicago Reacts. And if there's a fun video you want us to react to, type it in the comment section below, and we'll get to it as soon as possible. But I think now we should uh, play the video and see what's up in 1916. <sighs> let's do it. All right, let's go. World War I was supposed to have been a short and glorious war. But by what? 1916, a no. new kind of industrialized warfare had seen the death toll soar into the millions, with no end in sight. Naval blockades were beginning to cause shortages of food and fuel across Europe. Oh God. While thousands of women had entered the workforce, replacing the men sent to fight in their millions. All sides were preparing for a long war. The war has raged for a year and a half as the Allies continue to battle the Central Powers, recently joined by Bulgaria. At sea, the British maintain their naval blockade of Germany, preventing the import of food and other vital raw materials. Germany has retaliated with a U-boat blockade of Britain, but has to limit its attacks to avoid provoking the neutral USA, whose citizens have already been caught in the crossfire. Mm -hmm. On the Western Front, French, British and Belgian troops are dug in opposite the Germans, both sides trapped in the bloody stalemate of trench warfare. On the Eastern Front, the Russians have ended their long retreat and stabilized the line but their army has suffered huge losses. On the Italian front, Italian troops have launched a series of costly, unsuccessful attacks against strong Austro-Hungarian defences. While on the Balkan front, the Central Powers have overrun Serbia, whose army is forced to make a bitter retreat through the Albanian mountains. Now, on the 5th of January, Austro-Hungarian troops attack Montenegro. They are delayed at the Battle of Mojkovac, but three weeks later, Montenegro is forced to surrender. On the Caucasus front, the Russians launch a surprise winter offensive against Ottoman Turkish forces. Six weeks later, Russian troops occupy the city of Erzurum. In April, they capture the Black Sea port of Trebizond. Meanwhile, the British transport two motorboats to Lake Tanganyika in Africa. They finally arrive after a 10,000-mile trip by sea and land, and help the British seize control of the strategic lake. I wonder how long, <laughs> how many months, or did it, was it years that it took for them to get there? Or For not one, not one, but I'm talking about two motorboats. Two motorboats. You know, they, they, they need those motorboats right away, but... What a fantastic journey and a story that there must be told about a motorboat. Not, not one, but two. I can't. <laughs> From local German forces. The same month in German Cameroon, German troops besieged on Mora Mountain for 18 months finally surrender to the Allies. It marks the end of the Cameroon campaign. Hmm. On the Western Front, the Germans unleash a devastating assault on the French fortress town of Verdun. German General Erich von Falkenhayn knows France will defend this symbolic town to the last man. His plan 
in his own words, is to bleed France white in its defence. It is the strategy of attrition. Verdun becomes one of the most terrifying battles of the war, a mincing machine where infantry divisions are destroyed almost as fast as they can be fed into the line. Oh, no. In Britain, one million men have already volunteered for military service. But the government realises it won't be enough. What? Britain becomes the last major power to introduce conscription. That spring, on the Western Front, British troops are the last to be issued with steel helmets. The nature of trench warfare produces a high proportion of head wounds. The German Stahlhelm, the French Adrian helmet, and the British Mark I steel helmet offer limited protection from shell splinters and shrapnel. Uh, it looks like, yeah. Neutral Portugal has been cooperating with the British, which seems to offer the best chance of holding on to her African colony, Portuguese Angola. Okay. On the 9th of March, Germany retaliates by declaring war on Portugal. On the Eastern Front, Russia launches an attack near Lake Nara to relieve pressure on the French at Verdun. Some but it's a disaster. Have to weigh, there know. are 100,000 Russian casualties, and the attack fails to divert any German troops from the fighting at Verdun. My goodness, look at that. In Dublin, Irish Republicans I mean, launch an armed revolt against British rule. It becomes known as the Easter Rising, and is put down after six days of street fighting. Oh God. In the Middle East, after a five-month siege, British forces at Kut surrender. General Townsend leads 9,000 British and Indian soldiers into captivity. About half later die from starvation or disease. Britain wow. wants Arab support in its fight against the Ottoman Empire. So it's promised Arab leaders an independent Arab state after the war. But now Britain and France secretly sign the Sykes-Picot Agreement planning after the war to divide the Middle East into British and French zones of control. Hmm. Unaware of this deal, Hussein bin Ali, Sharif of Mecca, leads the Arabs in revolt against Turkish Ottoman rule. In the Battle of Mecca, his forces seize control of the Holy City. On the Italian front, Austro-Hungarian forces launch a surprise attack at Asiago. Italian defences give way. Right Austro-Hungarian troops are poised to break through into northern Italy. Like else <laughs> Me too. That <laughs> month in the North Sea, the German High Seas Fleet clashes with the British Grand Fleet at the Battle of Jutland. In the only major naval battle of the war, the British suffer heavier losses, but claim victory as the German fleet withdraws and does not re-emerge from its base for the rest of the war. Big push. For the summer of 1916, no the Allies minutes. have planned major simultaneous offensives against the Central Powers, from East and West. Now they are needed more than ever to relieve pressure on the French at Verdun and the Italians at Asiago. The Russians launch their attack first. On the Eastern Front, General Alexei Brusilov has carefully maintained the element of surprise. His troops break through the enemy lines, in some places advancing 60 miles and taking 200,000 prisoners. Wow. This brilliant, though costly, Russian attack achieves its aim, as the Central Powers are forced to redeploy troops from other fronts to shore up the line. Oh gosh, this is At sea, British cruiser HMS Hampshire, en route to Russia, hits a mine and sinks off Orkney. Among the 650 dead is Britain's iconic Secretary of State for War, Lord Kitchener. Three days later in the Adriatic, Italian troop ship Principe Umberto is sunk by a German submarine. 
It's the deadliest oh, sinking ships. of the war, with 1,900 lives lost. On the Western Front, Britain and France launched their major summer offensive, the Battle of the Somme. Hopes are high for a breakthrough, but the first day is a disaster. A long Allied artillery bombardment fails to knock out German defences, and waves of British infantry are cut down by machine gun fire as they advance into no man's land. In the space of a few hours, the British suffer 57,000 casualties, I mean, a third of them killed. Millions ca this it's the worst day in the history of the British Army. I'm gonna say the worst day? But more attacks are ordered, and the battle will rage for another five months. Oh, where did Romania joins the war? Encouraged by the Russian that. advance, Romania joins the Allies. But despite an initially successful advance into Transylvania... I mean, some of these little small countries are very quiet, and then all of a sudden, I, I hate the fact that they have to... You have to choose a side. You, you have to eventually choose a side. Yeah, but see, the thing is, Switzerland is like, you know what, guys? <laughs> Switzerland's always been like... We're, we're just going to be right here, and you know, and that's... You guys... Yeah. But but sadly, the, the, the cost of lives. And, and real quick before we continue on, uh, the, the, Tolkien, the author of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, he was actually at the Battle of Summit. Really? He, he was there, yes. Yes, he was there. He I lost, didn't know that. He lost a lot of friends in that battle. But yeah, he was there. That's terrible. No. Romania quickly faces a counteroffensive from German, Bulgarian, and Austro-Hungarian forces. The Allied force at Salonika tries to support Romania by launching their own offensive towards Monastir. With Serbian troops in the lead, there are small gains, but dogged Bulgarian resistance prevents a breakthrough. On the Western Front, General von Falkenhayn finally calls off the attack at Verdun. The French army has honoured their commander, General Nivelle's promise. Ils ne passeront pas. They shall not pass. But victory comes at a terrible price. Mm. 365,000 casualties. The Germans lose almost as many. Mm. Verdun remains one of the bloodiest battles in human history. Wow. For his defeat at Verdun, Falkenhayn is sacked and Germany's heroes of the Eastern Front, von Hindenburg and Ludendorff, take command in the West. Meanwhile, the Battle of the Somme continues. Near the village of Flair, the British introduce a new weapon they hope can break the deadlock of the trenches. It is called the tank. But despite some small successes, the first tanks are too few in number and too prone to mechanical failure to make any real impact. On the Eastern Front, Russia's Brusilov offensive comes to an end. Casualty estimates vary wildly, but it's clear both sides have suffered catastrophic losses. Neither the Russian nor the Austro-Hungarian army ever fully recovers. Oh my god. A million! On the Italian Front, heavy fighting rages throughout the autumn as Italian forces make repeated, costly assaults against Austro-Hungarian positions along the Isonzo River. The Battle of the Somme comes to an end amid autumn rain and mud. The Allies have advanced 10 miles at the cost of 600,000 casualties. German losses are about 450,000. The Allies reassure themselves that this is a winning strategy, because at this rate, Germany will run out of men first. <sighs> Meanwhile, disaster engulfs Romania, as the country is overrun by the Central Powers. Romanian forces Hi. suffer a quarter of a million casualties. The like, remnants of its army take yet? position no. alongside the Russians on the Eastern Front. That winter, Franz Joseph, Emperor of Austria since 1848, dies. He is succeeded by his son, Karl. In Britain, 
Prime Minister Herbert Asquith is forced from office and succeeded by David Lloyd George, while General Joffre is replaced as French Commander-in-Chief by General Nivelle, who so promises victory replaced. through bold, so aggressive really? action. Amid the comings and goings, US President Woodrow Wilson's attempts to mediate a peace settlement come to nothing. Neither side is willing to make concessions. Epic history team. <sighs> wow, so a lot to unpack. Millions are now dying. Um, um your I, thoughts. I just like I said before, nobody's tired. I know it's a lot of casualties, but it's like, oh well, they're gone. Let me add more. It's just more and more people coming into war, and I'm not understanding like when is enough. Um, sadly, I, it, you know these are you know a lot of these empires are being run by monarchs, and there's a lot of patriotism, blind patriotism. Um, but at the same time, too, it's just I, I think no one really expected things to get out of hand, and and, and I the, think the amount too. of effort that's been put in to maintaining the military forces, um, people just kept well, this this is a tactic, this is what has to work, yep. and, and and no one. I think no one was really prepared just about the onslaught of of, all huma this. of humanity. It's I get that. Humanity's worst nature coming out, and this is all over the planet. And um, sadly, it's it's some it's a it's it's a lesson that we have yet to learn about the the, the consequences of war. Yeah. And there we go. <sighs> well. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos. Mm -hmm. And see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care.